God is working everywhere in the world right now, including the Pacific Northwest. Pastor Ben, who started 100 Days of Prayer for Seattle, is joining us today. Ben, what is happening in our city right now that might encourage someone who feels like, man, I don't, I just don't have any hope for Seattle anymore? Well, so many things are happening because if we have Christ, we have hope. He's the anchor. And so in that sense, I want to tell whoever is listening that there are a lot of groups right now that are praying. One of the most encouraging, hopeful things is that Christians gather together to pray. We've seen so many new groups forming and gathering around this concept of praying for our city. There is a group meeting on Tuesday mornings, and uh, we've been praying for about two years, actually. June will be two years, so we've been praying every Tuesday morning at 714 in different cities. Wow. There's a group gathering every Thursday at noon at Westlake Center right there. There are pastors who are now from different denominations getting together to pray. We've seen kind of a revival of the practice and the power of prayer, and then we're getting so many reports from different areas of our city that prayers work. Prayers are answered by our amazing Lord Jesus Christ, and there's so much to look forward to. In spite of what we see around us, there is good news, and that is Jesus still saves, people still pray, people still get healed, encouraged, and it just it's a good time to be alive. Amen. Can you think of off the top of your head, this may be difficult, but uh, somebody in Seattle who has had a major transformation, like a story that you might want to share? Well, I can share one that we've been praying for a uh, church plant in the heart of Seattle for a long time. You probably know the story of, of, of Rick, Rich and, and uh, with Rich Ministry. And that's something that, that we've been praying for several years, that there will be a church plant in the heart of Seattle and one of the most difficult areas in Pioneer Square. And it was so powerful just in recent times that to see that a church plant has actually materialized that God has answered our prayers for years that we prayed. And now there is a church that serves the homeless population, those that are in that area. And through that ministry, we see so many lives that are transformed directly as a result of the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Of course, there's so many stories that we receive and get, and there's lots to share, but that's something that comes to mind right away. What can we be praying for Seattle this summer if maybe we're somewhere, we're at Gasworks Park, and we're with our family, and we just stop and we want to pray something over our city? What would you recommend? Well, this is our seventh year when we're launching again 100 Days of Prayer, and there are seven areas to focus on prayer. People don't have to remember all of them, though we'll we'll be happy to send them text messages and so forth. But any of these seven things, as we pray for our city, for Seattle, we got to pray for repentance. You got to have kind of a posture of repentance, turn for what is bad, turn towards God. Number two, praying for revival. We need revival in our soul, in our families, in our churches, and in our city. Number three, reconciliation. In this political climate, we need that more than ever. Number four, restoration of our city. Number five, redemption of people in our city. And number six, reconnecting churches, bringing people together. And number seven, just to pray that we will see the reign of God over our city. These are the, the seven points of prayer that God has given me uh, seven years ago. And we've been praying every summer in a concentrated, united focus of 100 days of prayer that, again, we're launching on May 20th through August 28th. And for 100 days, we'll be praying whatever we are. We don't need to gather necessarily, but people, families, uh, churches, communities, they can just pray for our city. And we hope that through this united effort, people will just kind of fall in love with Christ again and with the purpose of us really seeking the welfare of our city through prayer. Mm. That's pretty amazing that the things that are going on behind the scenes that we can't see spiritually um, just have to be astounding. So it's very exciting. And what do you see in the future for Seattle? Well, I honestly see in a hopeful sense a revival. I see more churches being planted. I see also as, as personally as being a co-vocational pastor, meaning that I'm part of the marketplace. I'm a, I'm a businessman. I do things in the community. I see a revitalization of the biblical values and scriptures because people are just looking for something, for purpose, for for some sort of meaning. And we know as Christians that that can only be found in Christ. And I see that happening in our city. I I can see an awakening happening in the marketplace, in businesses, on the streets of Seattle. And it may be different than awakenings in history, but I certainly see it through the eyes of faith and prayerful 
that we will experience an awakening in the, our beloved city of Seattle. And we pray for that. We hope for that. And we prepare for that. Mm. Pastor Ben, before we let you go here, I remember you sharing with us that God gave you this vision for 100 days of prayer for Seattle when you were in a plane. You were about to land over our city. And I I bet you feel the same way. Every time I land and come home to Seattle, my (laughs) heart just swells with love for this place. And I can only imagine, like, how do you think Jesus feels about this city and these people? Well, he feels love so much that he died on the cross for every human that is in our city, every person that, you know, from 1.8 million people that live in the greater Seattle area. God loves everyone so much that he sent his only son to die on the cross. So therefore, we ought to love every single person that's in the city. And God wants everyone to hear the good news, to believe in his son, Jesus Christ, and to accept him, to place their trust in him, and to be saved. Seattle is a beautiful city, amazingly developed, uh, beautiful buildings and everything else. But spiritually, there's still a lot of people that are not awakened in Christ. Like Ephesians 5.14 says, wake up, O sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Yes. Christ wants to shine on the lives of people in Seattle. Wow. We are so thankful for you, Ben. And we are just gearing up for 100 days of prayer over Seattle. Thank you for hanging out with us today. Thank you so much. God bless you.